I've worked here my entire working career and uh, I've lived in this area my entire life and uh, I'm very much an outdoor person. I like to ski a lot, I mountain bike, I hike, I also like riding my motorbike, I snowmobile, anything I could think of to play with gravity, I'm doing it. Here in the Elk Valley, a lot of people recreate in the mountains, and a lot of us live for that. And uh, there is a lot of hazard in the mountains, and specifically in the wintertime. We've had a lot of tragedy here in the Elk Valley with avalanches, and it's happened on nu numerous occasions and involving tech coal employees. So uh, we're all very aware and we're becoming more aware all the time, learning all the time. It's, it's really easy to get hurt in the mountains. It was the first weekend in April that um, I ended up getting myself in a bit of trouble. It was um, 50 centimeters of fresh powder overnight. Skier's delight and also uh, a skier frenzy happens. And, uh, and my friend and I were searching all the, the little areas within the ski area, looking for the last of the untracked powder. And we found it. And uh, I came over the rise. I know st steep convex slopes are hazards, but I dived right in and I didn't do all the safe things that I do when I ski in the backcountry. All of a sudden, bang, I was hit from behind by a wet snow slide that I had cut. And before I knew it, I was moving 30 miles an hour, totally out of control, trying to avoid from hitting trees. I was dropped onto a ski access road. I stood up, I wasn't hurt, I wasn't buried. It was a small class two slide. It carried me uh, probably 200 meters. I realized how lucky I was. And then two kids, less than 10 years old, skied right up over the avalanche debris, carried on with their father behind them. And it really struck home that uh, my actions not only almost hurt myself, I very easily could have buried one of those kids. They went by without even knowing that an incident just happened, and it, it horrified me. After my incident on the weekend, my supervisor presented me with my award for working at Elkview Operations for 18 years without being injured. And uh, that exact moment, it just, it really struck home with me. Like there I was on the weekend, almost badly injured. And here I am a day later getting my 18 year safety sticker. I really thought about how I backcountry skied for 40 years never got in an accident, in an avalanche, never. In this case, I felt really comfortable in my environment. I was in a controlled ski area where the ski patrol closes things that are hazardous, and uh, I let my guard down, and I got caught. Uh, we get into a, a state of mind sometimes where we just become complacent. Taking those mental holidays uh, can cost you your life. How many of the incidents that occur, not only at Elkview, but throughout tech, are actually attributable to people? It's around about 80%, right? So 80% of the incidents that are currently occurring out there are people related. Having a uh, moment of inattention, it's not a procedure that's wrong, it's not PPE, it's people. People making decisions that are impacting their safety. And actually, I had a look at our own stats, and uh, it's quite interesting, is that we have about 78% of the high potential incidents on this property essentially on the same category as well. Well, quite often, you know, uh, when there's people to talk to after there's been a serious mishap, you know, one of the common themes that I, I hear over and over again is, how could I have done something so stupid? Or I've been doing this for years, I, I can't believe it, you know, happened to me. A lot of the work that we do here is repetitive. Um, we do it day in, day out, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and um, we're good at what we do. 
but we need to stay focused. We're running pipe in and out all day. We kind of get doing the same thing and things get overlooked, right? So uh, we make sure on our tailgates every day that we mark down all our tasks for the day. And you know, if one guy starts to get a little wander, like as he starts wandering from the task, then we remind him or I take, I keep a close eye too. I check on the guys a lot and you know, see if they're checking their tooling and make sure they got their head on straight. When you get in a routine of doing things and you don't start to actually pay attention to what's going on around you, that does pose a really big hazard. When we talked about courageous safety leadership and identify complacency as a human behavior that we're all faced with, not only in the workplace, but at home, um, we need to have some tools that we can utilize to try to, to combat that. And some of the things that we do use here are things like developing safe work plans, tailgate meetings, um, you know, safety meetings, uh, things like field level risk assessments. FLHA is taking a look at the job and seeing what all your hazards are and finding ways to either eliminate them or to minimize them to do the job safely. Make sure you're doing these types of checks in order to ensure that you're not only safe at work but you're safe at home as well. Do a, do a walk around your car. If you're going to go and travel to Calgary, you know, hopefully you guys don't just climb in your car and start it and off you go. Check your tires, make sure everything's in good shape. We have a gang that mountain bikes quite often during the summer together. And uh, one instance here, we built a structure across Lizard Creek before we used to have to wade across the creek, determine what we thought is a pretty safe decking that we could cycle across. We did our hazard assessments of it We've listened to other people and we're comfortable with it. We, we did our homework. <laughs> I'm a lot safer in the back country now than I used to be when I was younger. I think a lot more. The, the field hazard assessments, I'm always doing. Um, very aware of my environment, very aware of the hazards. I just have to keep reminding myself to always follow my plan, never become complacent is complacency gets us in trouble.